Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well. And today I'm recording another video, and it'll be posted tomorrow because I am going to be on the road heading up to Tennessee to go to a meeting, which I will be at all day tomorrow, and then driving back on Friday to try and do my final packing before driving up officially all my stuff on Monday. So I'm going to try and get a couple videos out that way. I have a little safety net in case I'm not able to record because you know how that YouTube algorithm works. But anyway, Natalie Portman called Mighty Thor in Love and Thunder not female Thor is going to be the story of the day. This is something, of course, that's been talked about ever since it was first announced last weekend at San Diego Comic-Con, that apparently people are actually getting offended by people calling Natalie Portman female Thor. Even Taika Waititi has come out and tried to say it's not female Thor, she is called Mighty Thor. So apparently this comes from the comics where that was the character name that she was known by, even though it does not make any sense because she cannot be Thor because Thor is an actual person. You can say that she has the powers of Thor, you can say that she even wields Mjolnir, even though I don't think that makes any damn sense, and I think and firmly believe, and, and, <laughs> and I actually in this case I would say I I know that they did that in the comics in 2014 because they were trying to push in a woke direction. Some people are going to try and say, oh, it was in a, you know, it was in a what if scenario back in the 1980s. Exactly. It was in a what if scenario. And at the end of the day, she ended up marrying Odin. So do you really want to <laughs> go down that road? Because I'll go down that road with you and you're not going to like where it ends up. With all that being said, though. The fact that they're now coming out trying to say that you can't just call her female Thor and that she's going to be called Mighty Thor, it still just doesn't work. Because as I said, Thor is an actual character. Thor is an actual historical character within the within the legends of the you know, <laughs> within the legends of Norse mythology. And so you can't just simply say, oh no, she can be a female. Thor can be a female. No, Thor has always and will always be a male character because that's what the character has been both in the comics and also, of course, in Norse mythology. You can't just make these things up as you go along as they are trying to do. I'd rather them call her something different and say, oh, she wields the power of Thor, but she cannot be Thor because just metaphysically and also uh, biologically, that just is impossible. But I think it's really interesting and almost downright hilarious that people are now getting offended by people calling her female Thor, even though it's exactly what they're portraying her as. She's wielding Mjolnir. She's being called Thor. Even Mighty Thor has that in the title. And so I think it's more apt and more accurate to call her a female Thor because that's what they're trying to do. This is, again, the modern day Hollywood that we live in. This is the modern day MCU we live in where the next phase, phase four, is going to be that phase of pushing representation in films over storytelling. Now, could they happen? Could they possibly actually tell great stories with these characters? It's a possibility, but if you look to see the characters that have been pushed up to the recent points, especially films like Captain Marvel, you understand that they really care more about representation than they do about telling a good story. Objectively speaking, Captain Marvel is very flawed, and the reason why is because it had a crap ton of writers, two directors, and also you had a bunch of people trying to push this film out so quickly to get it close to and as close to Endgame as possible because they knew it needed to be there in order to be propped up in ticket sales because people are going to say, oh, I want to see Endgame, and apparently I need to see this movie in order to understand it, so I'm going to go out and support it. That's why you think it made over a billion dollars. It's not because it's a good movie. If you actually look at the critic ratings and you actually look at the audience ratings, you see that's obviously not the reason why. So you have to understand these things, and you have to look at that and say, okay, if this is the direction that they're going in, and they're going to continue to try and do this and say, oh, we just want female Thor, and so therefore, boom, we're going to push it out as fast as possible. Oh, we want the Eternals to be woke, we're going to push it out as fast as possible. Now, even if you have the most talented people behind the camera, and again, I'm a huge fan of Taika Waititi, when they first announced Thor 4 before Comic-Con, and that he was going to be attached to it before we knew any of the plot details or the name, I was very pumped for it. Again, I, I, even though I'm still on that train of, hey, I'm not going to support in theaters these Disney movies because I'm sick and tired of Disney. They own everything, and it's about time that some of us start to stand up and say, you know what, we're just not going to support you financially anymore, and hopefully you'll get the message, and hopefully enough people will join us in the cause that you'll be able to get the message and start making good films again, because there have been some good films. I'm just very, very concerned that they're going to start going in this direction and never be able to recover from it. So with that being said, I am going to be a person that say, I can still be excited about a movie even though I still hold to the same beliefs that I had beforehand. And that, of course, changed when they announced that it was going to be called Love and Thunder, which is just the dumbest name to a movie that I've heard in the MCU. Might not be as dumb as the Madness of the Multiverse or whatever that name is for Doctor Strange these days. I mean, obviously some people can say, oh, but it's it sounds cool. It only sounds cool because it reveals to you the entire plot of what the film is going to be focusing on. But if you actually try and say it three times fast, you realize, oh, that's kind of a little, uh, oh, that's kind of a little, um, uh, not really rolling off the tongue very well. I don't know how I feel about it. Love and Thunder to me is just really silly. Obviously, some people are going to and say, oh, but he's trying to get that 1970s vibe to it, and you can see the graphic as well, and that's what they're trying to go for, and that very well could be what they're trying to go for. 
With that being said, I still think that Taika Waititi is going to bite off a little bit more than he can chew with this film because he's going to have a studio over him saying, you need to push representation, you need to push this. And he very well could agree with it and even believe in it and want to push it himself. But I think that it's going to end up really kind of limiting his creative genius because I really do think he is a creative genius. I personally love Thor Ragnarok. I've loved what he do, what we do in the shadows. I think he's got a really great keen eye for comedy. And some people, that's like the one thing that many people on this channel and many other channels that I'm associated with disagree on is our opinions on Thor Ragnarok because of the level of comedy and what they do with certain characters in there. So I, I again, I, and I will be willing to have those, I will be willing to have those discussions with any single person that disagrees, that disagrees with me as long as, of course, it's respectful. But still, I think that this might be a little bit too much, and I really do think that it's funny that they are complaining and whining and moaning all about how we talk about this character because even though female Thor is the most accurate portrayal of this because Thor cannot be a <laughs> Thor cannot be a female and so the only way to really you know differentiate it is to say oh no this is the female version of Thor oh she's mighty Thor no because she can't be Thor because Thor is a male Thor is a dude and has always been because Thor is an actual god Thor <laughs> even in the comics Thor is the god he is the god of of the Nordic tradition and so you can't just simply say oh but she has the power of Thor and so we're just going to call her Thor no that's just not how this works that's not how any of this works and oh it was in the comics is not a good enough reason because as i said i'll go back to the 1980s comic where he she marries odin if you really want to go there but obviously i don't think you will because then you have thor marrying odin and does that really sound like it's a good idea probably not but guys what are y'all thoughts about this obviously this is something that's been out for a while and many people have talked about it and i've even talked about uh the you know the, the phase woke and it going everything but i just think it's interesting that now they're coming out and saying and as you can see from this is from cosmic cosmic book news taika waititi even says correction she's called mighty thor not not female Thor. So they're obviously going out of the way to do it. And there she is holding that hammer. And do you believe, do you really believe that this is going to be the person that's going to be able to, to wield the, you know, I always say wield the shield for Captain America to wield the, uh, the hammer. I doubt it. Oh, she's going to get bulked up. Okay. So she's 80 pounds. Is she going to get hundred pounds? Because there's only so much mass she can put on and still be healthy for the frame that she has. I really don't think that she's going to be able to pull it off nearly as well, but of course we'll have to wait and see if she's able to pull out the character, but regardless of if she's able to pull out the character acting wise and even maybe look wise, it's still going to be female Thor and that is just quite silly and anyone out there that's like, oh, you're just such a toxic male and you're just so, uh, you're just so sensitive and scared of a strong woman. Okay, so then why do I support Alita Battle Angel and why do I think that she's one of the most badass characters of all time? Not badass female characters, but badass characters of all time probably because she's an awesome character who's well-written versus these other characters that only <laughs> exist for the sake of pushing identity politics. But guys, what are y'all thoughts about this? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, if you like this video, smash the like button, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.